everybody, it's Mike Jeffers, ChicagoJazz.com. I just wanted to take a second to set this video up. I had the opportunity to interview the Commissioner of the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events for the City of Chicago, Mark Kelly, during the Chicago Blues Fest back in June. And we talked all about the combination of the Cultural Center with Millennium Park and how he was thinking of it as the Millennium Campus now and why all of the festivals have been moved there and what the bigger concept is for that space. So hopefully you enjoy this interview. Hey everybody, it's Mike Jeffers, ChicagoJazz.com and I am sitting here at the Pritchard Pavilion. It is June 9th. During the Chicago Blues Festival, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to sit down here with the Commissioner of D-Case, Mark Kelly. And I thought it would be great to sit down with you, uh, Mark, just to talk a little bit about the new changes uh, for the past couple of years with this fest, the Blues Fest, and of course the Chicago Jazz Festival. It's been moved into Millennium Park, which I think is an unbelievable idea because I think it just lends itself to this kind of an event. But I, I thought it would be interesting for people at home and watching online to, to hear from you about uh, some of the changes, some of the uh, things that you've had to go through to put these festivals into Millennium Park and also all of the great pre-events that are happening and how you're incorporating the Cultural Center into this campus that you're calling kind of the, what is it, the Events Campus? The Millennium the, Campus. Okay. So why don't we talk a little bit about that first. You're calling it the Millennium Campus now. So what does that incorporate? Well, th th this is one of the most incredible urban spaces in the world. And that's, that's not being bombastic. That's not hyperbole. So Millennium Park, about 22 million people visit it each year. And it's an art park. It's mm -hmm. no branding, just these, these, these awe-inspiring interactive art pieces. But people don't even think of it. They, they don't say, I'm going to the art park. No. Uh, <laughs> We're going to the bean. The, the brides <laughs> and, and the, 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 those are the quinceañera uh, uh, youth, Mexican youth. Uh, everyone feels they have to be here. It's, there's a, there's, it's a magnet. And... Yeah. and and it's a very special place in Chicago. Look at Chicago is a segregated city. It's not a city where you often see all the diversity, all the faces, all the the true expansive life of the city come together in a town square. Yeah. And you do here. And it's, so it's the, this this beautiful park without marketing um, that brings joy to everyone, and it, you know, it's children, it's, it's brides, it's lovers of culture, it's visitors. So it's, it's an incredible place. But then we also manage the cultural center right across the street. Mm -hmm. And it was I, I, when I when I became the commissioner, what struck me is we we talked about these like they were they weren't even in the same paragraph, much less the same sentence as if the cultural center was something else doing something else. And to me, it's it's an extension of Millennium Park, or Millennium Park is an extension of the cultural center. Yeah. The cultural center is another free public space, awe-inspiring, filled with cultural life, filled with delight, actually filled with brides too. We, <laughs> we, every, every month we have uh, wedding ceremonies at the cultural center. And I know you do a lot of receptions up in the big room too. Upstairs, but, but we have too. public, open, oh, really? um, yeah, <laughs> civic uh, weddings, um, and I love that idea. Uh, that just, just that democratic spirit. So we need to bring them together. Yeah. And um, the the other big idea in bringing them together is all of the cultural program we do here. So as far as we know, there's not an equivalent to Millennium Park that is a beautiful park with with hundreds of free cultural programs at the highest level. Mm -hmm. The Grand Park Music Festival, you know, a, a world-renowned orchestra and uh, uh, the House Music Celebration Gospel Fest and Jazz Fest and the music series. You get dizzy with yeah. all the things that that happen here, but I, I, I want us to become more, we're, we're becoming much more conscious about we, we present these events to engage the audience to love the form and to embrace it and go out to it. We don't, we don't have a, an event and say, oh, I love it because it's free. Um, right. Because actually we hurt the cultural environment then. Um, well, that was one of your big things because I remember being in some of the meetings last year we talked about the jazz and blues festivals is that this is kind of like the launching pad if not for that weekend, but for the whole year, like right. from jazz, right. you know, go out into the clubs, yeah. right. experience things. Right. And that's what I love about what you're doing with this Millennium Park campus, because you're right, the Cultural Center is 
for years and years and years and years before this park was even here, full of culture. I mean, that's where everything was generated from. And you're right, it was kind of separated until you combined them together. So Preston Bradley Hall, mm -hmm. with, with the, the world's largest Tiffany dome, those, those mosaics that, in marble that almost, you almost get dizzy from it all. And all of these, in many languages, these inscriptions, it's, it's a temple to learning and curiosity. But we, we haven't positioned it for what it is. I, I think it's, it's equivalent to Cloudgate, the Bean. Mm -hmm. But because we have so many private events, rental events, it's treated as a rental space that, that the public now and then gets to enjoy. Yeah. And I, I want to find a way, I mean, there's some revenue issues there that we have to grapple with, but it's sacred cultural space and we need to treat it as such. So you come, you go to the Bean, you go to the Cultural Center, I mean, we're going to put pillows in a big circle underneath the dome and, and, and it becomes interactive like going to the Bean where you do your selfie and what you do for the, through the dome in Preston yeah. Bradley Hall, you'll lay down and you'll be quiet for a moment, you'll take it in. And, oh, that's um, amazing. But, and then exhibits, we're gonna have a visitor center and the point of the visitor center is to help people navigate the Millennium Campus and be inspired to go out into the city. So, go see theater, go see, go, go to our crazy authentic jazz and blues clubs, yeah. which you can't find anywhere else, but we take for granted. Mm -hmm. um, Get out to the museums. Get out and be brave and 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 be uh, deeply involved in the cultural life of the city. Well, and, and also if you're a tourist here, or even if you're a local, um, you know, going to Navy Pier, going to different places, that's just a given. That's where you go. But I think you're right. Is that a lot of people? I mean, how many people are watching this? They don't know about the dome. Right. They don't know right. anything about it. So that's an amazing idea to put the pillows down. That's going to create a whole new uh, marketing plan and tell people about that area. Right. Because, uh, I mean, the only reason why I know is because I've played up there for, for private events, you know. So now moving the Blues Fest, let's talk a little bit about the festivals now that are happening here in Millennium Park, pretty much exclusively except for Taste, I think, if I'm right. Uh, with Blues Fest specifically, since that's where we're at right now, I love the way this is laid out, and I love the enhancements you've made for this year, too, because obviously everything's a learning process. What was some of the big challenges, or what was the big idea to move it over to Millennium Park to begin with? Well, you know, so I'm the new commissioner, uh, and I might be white here, <laughs> but um, I, I don't lack for energy or ideas or ambition in a good sense of it, and I grew up in Chicago, so I, 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 I went to Jazz Fest before it was even called Jazz Fest. I grew up at Blues Fest. These yeah. are... These are um, festivals that have sort of centered me, but I, I was struck by they become a bit, so Blues Fest, when you're 33 years in the same location, and it's sort of predictable, and you know what it is and what it's supposed to be, and the sound quality, for the most part, was awful, yeah. and it just like we're, and 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 it, that the the the, the, geog the the setting was one issue, but what more concerned me is the future of the blues because we, we, we can't be caught in a sort of a preservation uh, or a Dixieland jazz preservation society right. where we all grew up with a form and we love it, and that form has moved forward, but we're loving this at this time, and we get caught in a time capsule. Right. Um, and, and that's, you know, there's, there's lots of blues, but blues continues to move. And so there's two ideas. One, we've got this, Millennium Park wasn't built back then, when, but let's move it. We moved the Jazz Fest several years ago to much um, great concern. Oh, yeah. Like, oh my God, it's going to be ruined. <laughs> if we were to try, if we were to announce we're moving Jazz Fest back, Grand Park, people would go crazy because now <laughs> the the sublimity of the space and the sound and the sights become part of the Jazz Fest. Yeah. Um, and of course, in our first year, it was a great first year we moved to Millennium Park. It was also, whoa, we got we got a lot of things to learn because, by the way, our audience, here's the other thing, our audience went up by 200,000 people. Really? Oh, yeah. Huh. We, we just, the audience just went through the yeah. roof because it was in Millennium Park. Yeah. It, so a whole new audience. What, one of the other things that was concerned with Blues Fest is it, 
it, it didn't have the diversity of the city. Mm -hmm. And how can we have a, 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 a black musical form? And, and, and it, we, we got to struggle with that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to bring, the, the whole city has to be here for it. So all of these issues, were, we brought it back the first year. It was great. Um, but then we got together, we, we listened to, you know, concerns that there was not enough food, there was some log jams. Um, now, we, we have seven stages. We have 25, I think this is the most performers that have, there's never been an official count, but it's the most performers in Blues Fest in a decade. There's a um, lot of action going on out there. You, it's, yeah. you get dizzy. Yeah. Uh, and then it's the mix of the park um, and... And so there's a lot more music, there's better flow, there's more musicians. We've pushed more music out into the city because that's the point. It's, it's not to be this hermetically sealed great festival. In fact, we could be a, a great festival for the festival itself and fail the musicians. Yeah. Because if we don't translate this into that, they're screwed. Exactly. Um, yeah. So we're heralding the clubs. Uh, all, all of the uh, blues foundations, those, those, they're there for free mm -hmm. because we care about you. We yeah. want you to prosper. We want to, we want to give you uh, a platform um, yeah. so that you can make uh, yourself known. Um, I always think of the, the festivals like Blues Fest or Jazz Fest. It's like the trade show for blues or jazz for Chicago. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the way you're approaching it makes total sense. And I, I do uh, have noticed this year the lead up and also all of these after sets that are happening. There's got to be double what I've seen in the past. I mean, they're having after sets at places I never knew existed. I don't even know if that was a blues place, but now they're doing it. Well, so see, it's you, really you, you're, telling, you're, you're warming my heart because oh. that's the point. Yeah. It's the city's on fire. It's not, it's not this great thing over here for certain people who love it, but the city feels the weight of it. I, I've, I've always felt that this city, as much as we have done things like Blues Fest or Jazz Fest, strangely, we've never truly honored these amazing cultural heroes that have come out of um, mostly the South Side. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think you know, I, I'm sort of, not sort of, I was the architect of the Muddy Waters mural. I wasn't the commissioner then. I didn't have permission to do it. I didn't have money. Right. Um, I just pulled that out of my hat. But what I did know is that Muddy Waters is one of the greatest musical um, heroes in the world who has shaped everything. And most people in Chicago don't even know who he is. And we need, we need a marker. And that 10 story mural. That's, that's um, a big marker. <laughs> did, uh, you know, when it went up, you know what? I, I went in the corner at State and um, Washington and yeah. I'd say, Who is that? And people would. You know, no idea, right? 90% um, of people would look and, and then they'd say, BB King or Buddy Guy. Um, and only rarely, but now when you stop someone, um, this isn't scientific, of right, course. Well, yeah, but, right. 50% of the time will say, uh, oh yeah, that, well that's Muddy Waters. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, and you think about how many musicians are like that, how many artists in Chicago are like that. So that's, it's just getting the ball going though, I think is gonna do a lot for that as far as raising awareness to everybody in Chicago, right? So yeah, the other cool thing I wanna talk about yep. is Bridges to the Blues. So, mm -hmm. so the, the youth of Chicago, um, they don't know. The blues heritage, they don't hear it, they don't know it. Um, so we did a, a competition of sort of hip hop artists offering them the potential in a competition to perform at Blues Fest, but they had to, working within their hip hop form, but they had to listen to the blues and then they had to bring it into their music. And so I was just last week at the Cultural Center where the finalists were battling. Yeah. And yeah, like, you know, I don't know how it was, but like an 18 or 19 year old kid would get up and say, well, I, I'd never heard Muddy Waters before, but I listened to him, and then you hear this song, and it's 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 his genre, it's hip hop, but you hear the blues, yeah, and and you know the forms shift and change and live on, and and we have to help manage that dialogue, not not try to just honor this, but but help 
help that journey of this ever moving, flowing musical form. Yeah, you know, it's it's amazing because I don't know how much uh, the Department of Special Events has done that in the past and incorporated that, but it seems like since you've gotten involved, that's become kind of your you know a real a real push on your end to do that to educate and incorporate. Right. I mean, all the different styles, like what last year, I think we incorporated a little bit of uh, was who was it? A rapper? Uh, was it Khan yeah, or something? Yeah. Like? Was that Ryan jazz? Fest. Ryan yeah. Fest. Was that a jazz? But when you think about it, everything comes from the blues. Everything comes from the jazz. And that's how these right. other art forms right. come. But I, you're right. I don't think a lot of people know that. Well, actually, and, and I'm, I'm bending on, on both sides. So we had the House Music Festival. And, and so Frankie Knuckles. And it, it's, it's a music forum that... It, it, it first listen doesn't attract my ear like you know I, I, I sound like to, to my description of music to them probably sounds like what someone would say who didn't know jazz or but but it's a, it's a love musical form and next year I, we're, we're gonna we, we had a we had a, a house gospel mashup at the house music. And, and, and I, I want to help us. The, the next year, there needs to be a gospel choir at Blues Fest who wants to be a Blues Fest and is, is thinking about blues in their gospel form. Yeah. And at, at Gospel Fest, we need, we need to, you know, look at, look, look at all the artists where, you know, the gospel has been as influential as blues and they're, they're joined at the hip, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, you you look at all these musicians, especially all the Chicago musicians. They all started in the gospel choir. You know, whether it's Curtis Mayfield or Bo Diddley or Lou Rawls or just you, just you, you, mm -hmm. Sam Cooke and the Staple Singers and yep. Um, so we, we they, they, so we have jazz, blues, gospel, and house, and it's one giant festival of Chicago's black music legacy and we honor each form but we 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 bend and push and 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 bring them together and all of it pushing the entire musical scene forward yeah well it's it's amazing and I'll tell you I think what we're going to do is uh I'm going to come in and interview you again about Jazz Fest. I okay. Think, because this was a great discussion. I th you know, and I think that everybody watching this, it's still early in the year. There's a lot of programming about to happen here at Millennium Park from now up until Labor Day and even after Labor Day. So I encourage you to get out. By the way, that incredible tribute to Bronzeville that's happening at the Cultural Center is unbelievable. I took a tour of it last week. I'm, just, I'm blown away by that. So. Can, can, can I speak to Absolutely, well, yes. Because I, I asked, I went, uh, Tim Samuelson, yep. um, our, our cultural historian, and if, if, if you haven't had, if you haven't had the joy of uh, listening to him, but I knew he had all these artifacts of Bronzeville music, and I asked him to put the, the show together. It's the first ever time, it's the first time as far as we know it's ever been done, and it speaks to the, the Bronzeville to the United States of music was a equivalent to Florence in the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing. And that show sort of grabs in a very fun, visceral way. It's amazing. Yeah, I, so, I went through it. I talked to Tim. It's yeah. fascinating. Shot video and stuff, so yeah. we're going to have that coming out. But I, kudos, cool. because it's unbelievable. So yeah. thank you right. so much for sitting down. All right. Thanks. Thanks for watching.